Police have sealed off a busy central London street during rush hour amid reports of an armed man causing a disturbance, according to the police. The man involved in the armed siege is reportedly an unemployed British national. At least a dozen emergency vehicles with lights flashing could be seen blocking off Tottenham Court Road in London. Let's cross on over to London, where Press TV's Amina Taylor is ready to give us an update. Amina, what's going on uh, in central London? Kaveh, it's a very disturbing situation at the moment and one that must be quite frightening for those who are right in the middle of one of London's busiest shopping areas in one of London's most viable commercial districts. Now, what we know so far, despite sketchy reports, is that a 50-year-old unemployed man identified by members of the company which he's taken over as one Michael Green was said to be very upset that he hadn't been granted a HGV license, which is a heavy goods vehicle license, which is something you need if you're supposed to drive lorries or trucks or make deliveries of a certain kind. And we know in these very straight economic times, it might be very difficult for somebody to be told that they don't have the necessary tools in order to earn a living. Now, we don't know if this gentleman is mentally unstable. That is one of the uh, conditions being reported by those who were caught up in the siege. He marched into the building, demanded to see a particular employee who was actually standing beside him, but he didn't recognize her, and then said he had nothing to live for, and at which point, according to reports, he proceeded to take at least four people hostages. He said to have canisters of gas attached to him, which is why I think people initially thought that this was some kind of terror alert. And now we're waiting to see what happens because though people want a peaceful conclusion to this, where Mr. Green might get the treatment that he needs, it seems that it's already been such a high profile incident with snipers involved at this stage. So Kaveh, we're just waiting to find out the next steps because Tottenham Court Road is a very, very, very busy public area and we wouldn't want this situation to not be contained at this stage. So what I'm gathering from you, Amina, is that uh, uh, there's two alarming things here. One, he has some hostages. Two, uh, what you mentioned, these uh, gasoline cylinders that he's strapped with, which puts into question the security measures and how it obviously failed if this is an office building that he walked into. What are we hearing the media saying? I mean, are there any official words regarding any of the details behind what is taking place? So far, we've only had the word of individuals who escaped from the fifth floor of this building, Shropshire House. I know it quite well. It's um, by a very busy interchange where I've been known to come out to take another uh, set of public transport in order to get home. So it's an area I'm quite familiar with. And I know that in walking to these buildings, you're not frisked, you're not searched. If you know the floor you need, you can merely walk upstairs. And I think it highlights the danger of people who are dealing with the public on a day-to-day -day basis when you just simply, you don't know where the next bit of trouble might be. And if it's a gas cylinder, well, this is, this is quite serious. This is something that could cause an explosion. And in such a tightly packed commercial area, that's also one teeming with tourists, it could be problematic, Kaveh. Okay, well, let's uh, take a little introspective into this. I mean, is this uh, man that you mentioned, is he unemployed? Because according to some reports, he is. And of course, uh, given that, uh, uh, when we look at the big picture, uh, maybe it's a sign uh, of uh, people being unemployed, of how they're taking out their frustration. Somewhat reminiscent, of one of the worst case scenarios, what happened in the United States in a post office where a man went on a shooting spree because he was fired from his job. Uh, are we looking at a situation like this in the UK, this being maybe an incident uh, that uh, perhaps reflects that? We don't want to speculate too much because the full facts are not known at this stage, Carvey. But what we will say, just speaking in very general terms, in these pressurized economic times, when individuals who are the breadwinners for their families find themselves without the means by which to earn a decent living for their families, I don't think you need to be much of an expert to know that there might be more instances where people feel wholly frustrated 
where they feel as if the system has failed them despite their best efforts. And we don't know what has happened with Mr. Green in this scenario, with the exception of the eyewitness reports that we have been getting. But when somebody marches into a building and is seemingly distraught that they haven't been granted a license in order to do work, and then ends up saying, I don't care if I live or die, let us hope this is not the tip of the iceberg, but an isolated case of a man who felt he'd run out of options. As the day progresses, we will, of course, find out a little bit more of the tale of Michael Green and what his backstory is. But I do hope, Kave, that this is not the beginning of a trend, though one could say that it would be understandable that as the economic crisis kicks in and belts are tightened, there'll be more and more frustrated individuals but hopefully not those who will take such drastic actions. Okay, well, thank you very much. I mean, Natalia there from London. Obviously, if any developments come out of this story, uh, we'll make sure to give it to you here on Press TV.